Okay, here I'm going to use Gaussian elimination to solve a system of equations. We've got x plus y minus z equals 9, y plus 3z equals 3, negative x minus 2z equals 2. So the first thing I'm going to do is write down my augmented matrix. So from the first row, our coefficients are positive 1, positive 1, negative 1. Our constant is 9. Our second row, we have 0x, we have 1y, we have 3z, and our constant is 3. And from our last row, we have negative 1x, we have 0y, negative 2z, and our constant is positive 2. So what we're going to do is, our goal in this case is, we want to write this in row echelon form. So the idea is we're going to write the matrix uh, so that it's in triangular form and where the uh, leading coefficient in each row is equal to 1. Okay, so to do this, uh, I look at my first row. I want the first non-zero entry in the first row to be a, a 1. So in this case, uh, we've got a positive 1 here. Um, and again, the, the idea is if you kind of look along the diagonal, Forget about the constants. If you look along the diagonal x, y, z, we're going to make the entries below that into zeros. We're going to make the, uh, the, the constants all equal to 1. That's, that's what we're shooting for here. Okay? Once we do that, we're going to use some back substitution. So again, my goal eventually is to get zeros here, and I want 1s along the diagonal. That's, that's, our, that's what we're going for. Okay, so that'll kind of be step 1 here. Okay, so to get uh, a zero in the, in the third row, first column, I'm just going to take row one and add that to row three, and that's going to replace my row three. I like to use the little arrow to indicate which row is changing. There's tons of arithmetic in these problems, so anything I can, you know, I can do to help keep myself organized, I always found that helped. So I'm not changing the first row not changing the second row either. And now I'm going to do my arithmetic. So 1 plus negative 1 will be 0. That's what we wanted. 1 plus 0 will be 1. Negative 1 plus negative 2 will be negative 3. And then 9 plus 2 will be positive 11. Okay, so again, we want 1s along the diagonal. Again, forgetting about the, the column with the constants. Well, we do have a 1 in our second row, second column, so that's good. Uh, we said we wanted to get uh, zeros everywhere below that diagonal. Okay, everywhere below that diagonal. So I need to change the entry in the third row, second column. I want to make that into a 0 as well. Well, if we just add row 2 and row 3, that's not going to do the trick. But if we multiply the second row by negative 1, and then add that to our third row. I think that'll do it for us. So let's see here. So again, I'm not changing the first row at all. I'm not changing the second row either. Uh, now I'm going to change the third row again by doing the arithmetic. So Negative 1 times 0 plus 0, that's just 0. Negative 1 times 1 will be negative 1. If we add negative 1 to positive 1, we'll get 0, which is exactly what we wanted. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus negative 3 will give us negative 6. Negative 1 times 3 again will be, well, negative 3. Negative 3 plus 11 will be positive 8. And now we've got our third row. All right here, getting close. The last thing, again, we want to do is we want to make our, our first non-zero entry in the third row, which is our negative 6. We want to make that into a positive 1. Well, what I'm going to do to the third row is simply, you can think, you know, I would divide by negative 6. We don't really think about division so much. We always talk about multiplying by non-zero constants. 
So I'm going to multiply the, the third row by negative one-sixth. And that's going to give me my new third row. So in essence, you're just dividing the third row by negative six. Again, not doing anything to the first row. Not doing anything to the second row. Negative six divided by negative six would be positive one. Eight divided by negative six, well, that would be eight over negative six. And we can reduce eight over six into four thirds. Again, not forgetting the negative. Okay, so now we've got our matrix in the form that we want. And what we do now is we go back and write the corresponding set of linear equations. And then we start using uh, substitution, back substitution to solve. So recall this is the column corresponding to x, the column corresponding to y, the column corresponding to z, and then our constants. So we've really got the system of equations 1x plus 1y minus 1z equals 9. From our second row, we've got 0x plus uh, 1y plus 3z equals 3. And from our, our last row, we simply have that positive 1z equals negative 4 thirds. Okay, so now we know what z equals. The idea is we can take that and substitute that into the second equation, solve for y. Then we'll have both y and z. Then we can substitute that into the first equation and solve for x. Okay, so using our second equation, we have y plus 3 times z. Well, that's negative 4 thirds. That equals positive 3. Well, the threes would simply cancel out, so we would have y minus 4 equals 3. And if we add 4 to both sides, we'll get that y equals positive 7. Okay, so now I'm going to take these two values and simply put those back into our first equation. So again, we had x plus y, which is 7, minus the value of z, which is negative 4 thirds, and that's going to equal positive 9. All right, so very close here. We've got x plus 7. We would have plus 4 thirds equals 9. And uh, you could always get common denominators and add and subtract fractions. I'm going to get rid of the fractions, or I should say fraction, by multiplying both sides by positive 3. So we'll have to distribute that. We'll get 3x, 3 multiplied by 7 is positive 21. 3 multiplied by 4 thirds would just be positive 4. 9 times 3 will be 27. Let's see, we would have 3x plus uh, 21 plus 4 will be 25. And if we subtract 25 from both sides, we'll get that 3x equals 2. And if we divide both sides by 3, we'll get that x equals 2 thirds. So now we've got our solution. It says the solution to the system of equations would be when x equals 2 thirds, we said that y equals 7, and z equals negative 4 thirds.